Hi, I'm Chris McCrum, and this is our poster sample size justifications in gait and posture for the ISPGR conference. And this is a short summary video of, of the key points of the poster. Um, in this study, we were interested in investigating a change uh, in the author guidelines at the journal Gait and Posture, um, specifically um, between uh, 2018 and 2019, uh, the journal introduced a requirement for sample size justification, which uh, you can see in the screen here how it's written in the guidelines. All articles should include the justification of their sample size. While there's no set requirement for minimal sample size, studies considered to have too small a sample size to answer the research question will be rejected. Um, and it was interesting for us to see, well, some time has passed since this, since this was introduced, so what has the effect of this potentially been. Um, so we did an, an audit of um, three issues of the journal before the guideline was in place and three issues after the guideline was in place. Um, you can see the, the details of the number of articles and specific volumes we investigated in the methods. And using Daniel Lacken's article on sample size um, justification, we used these different types of justification in order to classify what we found in the gait and posture articles. So just briefly, um, and I'll direct your attention to this figure here. This are the, the end of the articles, and in the bars you can also see the percentages. Um, articles with a justification in black, without a justification in light gray, and unclear uh, in dark gray. And you can see that pre-guideline, uh, only 16.6% .6 of articles provided a justification of one of these types, whereas post-guideline this did moderately increase to 28.1%. And in this table, you can see that um, the predominant type of justification used was an a priori power analysis at, at both time points. Um, we also provide some information here on the, the sample sizes of the studies we looked at. Um, I'll just mention briefly that actually the median sample size didn't really change over this time, despite the fact that there were more justifications in the end. Um, so what we conclude from this is, well, the, the guideline is not a consistent criteria for acceptance of the journal, um, uh, not enforced by the, the journal or the publisher. Um, Including a, a relatively simple guideline like this does seem to be associated with an increase, although we can't really determine causality here. Um, and what we also found, which you can see in our, our data via the links here, is that most of the justifications given, um, which in this case were mostly power analyses, we, we couldn't replicate them because the, they were not detailed enough. So the actual quality of the justification is still questionable. Um, but first, of course, we would like to see even more transparency and justification in general before we can then look further whether these justifications are actually appropriate. So our main message is there across the top. In the majority of cases, authors of gait and posture articles do not provide a justification for their study sample size. And the inclusion of this guideline requiring a justification was associated with a modest increase um, in articles providing a justification. So thanks for your attention. The study is published. So please um, check it out um, and the materials and data and also all the screening information if you want to do a study like this in another journal or in future issues of Gait and Posture, you're uh, free to use our open resources. So thanks and uh, if you have questions, post them in the chat or get in touch. Thanks.